Emmanuel Charpentier. Yes, this is me. Hello. So, uh, could you just tell us how how did you hear the news? Um, the general secretary Graham Hansen uh, called me at ten fifty nine. <laughs> Very precise. And I mean, there's been so much speculation about the prize for so long. Uh, it must have been strange because, in some ways, you must have been expecting a call. You know, I have been reminded uh, <laughs> thousands of times that uh, one day, I mean, one day surely Chris Paul would be awarded, and that in, in, in this regard, uh, most likely my name will be uh, will be mentioned. But I have to say that when he called, I was totally, uh, I, I could not believe it. I mean, I was really, I mean, I'm still emotional. Because you don't, I mean, again, uh, and, and I think it's maybe I have to say the fact that you hear it and, and that, as I said, you connect to it, but you, you still believe it's another person or it's so real, it's not. And when it happens, okay. <laughs> Now it's real, and now I, I have to deal with it. But I also have to say, I think a lot of also all my colleagues of the Chris Barfield um, who have uh, really supported a, a, a new field of research, they're relatively young. It's only, let's say, uh, you know, uh, 12 years old. It's very recent. And I also think of my colleagues, for sure, of all my uh, former members of, of my team, Elitza Delcheva and Christoph Szyminski who really uh, also made this uh, happen. Um, it must be just extraordinary to see the explosion in the field. It's, it's, it's having such an impact so far. Yes. I think it's very unique because when you see how the field of just CRISPR biology, understanding the CRISPR-Cas systems in Bacta and Archaea at the physiological level and, and um, even more at the mechanistic level, I mean, this has been, uh, you know, uh, an incredible, uh, how would you say, explosion of, <laughs> of knowledge and publications. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, following the, the the publication of the science paper uh, that uh, of of uh, Jennifer and I, the we, well, I mean, it was clear the scientific community was. <laughs> Uh, was waiting for, uh, let's say, uh, a tool that will simplify the genetics of their organisms of choice and that uh, yeah, everyone jumped on it. Uh, the development is, is incredible. The, the spectrum of applications is, is quite uh, incredible. And it has created <laughs> actually also a lot of interest and I have to say a lot of jobs in the biotechnology field. <laughs> In the yeah communication field, in the there is even a new journal, uh, the CRISPR journal. The, it, it it has developed in in an incredible way. Indeed, it, and it's it's sort of humbling to to reflect on the fact that this is derived from something that you learnt from looking at bacteria. It kind of changes your view of humanity and what nature has to teach us, perhaps. Yes, and I think in, uh, you know, I'm a microbiologist and I have always been interested in uh, infectious diseases. And my field of research is not really well recognized uh, at the fundamental level. And uh, um, so it's, it, it's good to see that, uh, that uh, there is still a lot to be, um, to, to learn. So another question. I mean, you are... You and Jennifer are the sixth and seventh female laureates. That takes the total from a little under three to a little under four percent of total number of chemistry laureates being female. Do, do you think there's something particularly important about the fact that this is an all-female prize? Uh, I'm, you know, <laughs> uh, first I'm a scientist, but uh, no, I, I think it's. Uh, I mean, uh, um, I think it's, uh, it's 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 very important because. Uh, because because uh, we see uh, even more, um, how do you say, uh, uh, girls and young women choosing um, science, at least for the field of biology. And it's very important to provide the message that, uh, you know, the, the ultimate recognitions are, are you know, are, uh, how do you say, uh, independent of the, of the gender. <laughs> um, mm. 
and that uh, I, I think it's 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 most likely a, a very positive uh, message for uh, for the the girls and the young women who, who wish to to start science, continue in science, and and to really provide a, a clear message that uh, it is possible <laughs> to achieve the ultimate recognition, even if you are a female. I, I think it's, uh, obviously, this is the first time, as far as I, I, I heard today, mm-hmm. uh, that uh, the price is awarded to only uh, female scientists. No, I think it's 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 you know it it is a reflection of what is uh, occurring in, in our days. You don't specifically look at the gender, <laughs> and uh, you know, and here it's a it's it's a good example to show that in our days this is what happens. You have a lot of collaborations happening uh, among, uh, let's say, uh, male leaders only or female leaders only or or mixity, and and it's fine. It's, yeah. uh, it's the way it's supposed to be. It should be a natural process. Indeed. Of course, Dorothy Hodgkin was awarded the Chemistry Prize alone, but this is the mm-hmm. first time for two women. And talk about your collaboration with Jennifer Doudna. Um, the, the collaboration was uh, was uh, short and intense. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, because, yeah, because uh, obviously this was clear that, uh, again, I, I would say this, it's thanks to... Thanks to the natural mechanism of CRISPR-Cas9 in, in bacteria, sometimes you work on, on systems and, uh, you know, it takes a long time to, to, to see what you would like to see or, or the result is, is not, you know, black and white. It's, it's light gray or dark gray. <laughs> <laughs> and here it was really uh, white, let's say. <laughs> uh, and, and then, you know, for sure, uh, a, a, a wish from both sides and an understanding that we needed to go fast because, uh, you know, <laughs> the, yeah. the story was, uh, was a great one. Yeah. So you that's must... why it was intense. It was a, a common understanding that it was important to join forces and, and uh, you know, and, and, and be fast and be also, I have to say, this is also part of the reason why uh, uh, I'm on, you know, I approached uh, Jennifer Dunn. Also, uh, you know, we were uh, very much in line in, in the way to uh, do very um, precise research. It was not uh, it was it was fast but uh, precise and deep. Um, yeah. And for this, we recognize one another. We we are the same type of scientists who who uh, you know want to see <laughs> the the details of 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 the data. So this was, I mean, it's important because I think, you know, it's important because you, it, it, this is not about a paper published in nature or published in science. As a matter of fact, you know, this refers to um, papers published in the high impact factor journals. It, it's really about, uh, you know, solid work. And I, I want to say this because in our days where Everyone is, is uh, you know, is, and um, how do you say, uh, uh, evaluated through a potential number of publications and H index factors. Uh, this does not, it, it's nice. <laughs> but sometimes you just need one story, one very good story. You need time to do the work in a proper way, in a deep way. And, 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 and I want to mention this because uh, I, 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 I I would not like to see science having lost this sense. It's so important. Progress does not come through impact factors. It comes through solid work, yes. The potential, of course, of CRISPR-Cas9 is great and wonderful, but it also has a a slightly dark side that it it could be misused. How do you think that should be regulated? How can we we make sure it's used for good? First of all, uh, CRISPR-Cas has uh, facilitated a lot and the, the genetics in, in research and development, um, but as to uh, have it as a, as a technology uh, that can be used safely for the editing of, of the human germ line, it's, it's something else, mm. uh, first of all. And second of all, uh, one should not underestimate the fact that CRISPR-Cas9, even though it is a wonderful tool, uh, it will be extremely uh, difficult to get the technology to modify more than one gene at a time. 
Um, so I think, uh, let's say, uh, indeed, unfortunately, we, we may uh, see uh, unfortunate and, and really unwanted uh, um, ex- experiments. It's just sometimes, yes, yeah, sometimes the science moves faster than society's ability to think about the science. And that's the, I suppose, that's that, the thing. That is, I think, uh, the case indeed for, um, for a lot of, of technologies. <laughs> the technologies <laughs> go faster than uh, yeah. indeed. Well, it's been a huge pleasure speaking to you. I hope we can speak at greater length about all these important things soon. In the okay. meantime. Thank you very much. Well, thank you and congratulations again. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye.